All right, how you doing, guys? It's time for another video. Four reviews, four albums. You know how we do. Recent acquisitions, mostly. So, while I talk, we're going to be checking out Doom Snake Cult's LSD, or Love, Sorrow, Doom, as it's actually called. This came out on JL America, Turbo USA, back in 1992. Real odd release. It's not really all that great. <laughs> nice job, JL America. It's just like big, stupid riffs. Kind of doomy, but like the drumming or the percussion or something kind of holds it back from being like epically heavy. It's a little more stonery, I guess. Uh, but the singer uh, is Ace from Goat Lord. So that's kind of got a little bit of its charm. I don't know. It's just kind of a fun thing to put on every now and then. So these four records I put picked up at Reckless Records uh, this weekend when I was in Chicago for Dodheim's Guard. So first we've got Nair Materon. Killer band. They've got a lot of stuff out, and this is my first time buying one of their records. Their demos are really crazy good, and they are kind of famous, I guess, for having... Um, Vic Kotnik from Dodem's Guard play some session work with them every once in a while. They also have an album that has a cover of a Dwen Zend song. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure what it is. So I just kind of decided to leap in with this record, and it's fucking really, really good. It's called Discipline Manifesto, and it came out in 2005 on Black Lotus Records. I'm not really familiar with that label. So I didn't really know what to expect. It looks kind of generic, but these guys are from Greece, if I'm not mistaken. And they're just really connected with a lot of different bands. They're friends with a lot of different bands. And they kind of sound like a homogenization of kind of semi-modern Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, German uh, bands. So they kind of sound just really European overall. But they're vicious. They're great. They're super riff heavy. All the riffs are really, really killer. They're really aggressive and satanic. You love how I just go through the booklet looking at it like I'm showing you the booklet, but I'm actually not. It's a really good habit to pick up. Kind of cool band photos in there. I kind of like the layout of this uh, booklet. It's got a different painting for every page of the artwork or for the lyrics. Kind of like that extra touch. But yeah, it's super, super good. Riff heavy stuff. The drumming is just blasting tight. I have no complaints about this thing other than it being just kind of a little typical. Uh, for its time. It's not the kind of thing that I ordinarily put on, but it's really, really killer for its time. So next we've got Voivod, War and Pain. We've got, well, this, I would say it's a two disc, but it's actually three discs on here. I actually picked up uh, Dimension Hatros, this, like, a version of Dimension Hatros like this. Uh, Metal Blade did these a couple of years ago, and they're fucking great. So I decided this was definitely worth picking up for $11. Uh, there's still one more early Voivod record I need to get. I think it's Roar. Um, and I think I'm pretty much good for uh, Voivod. So this is their first debut. This came out in 84. Yeah, 84 on Metal Blade. Uh, and so what we've got here is bonus songs. There's a bunch of like CD-ROM kind of stuff on here. I mean, when's the last time you actually put a CD in your computer to look at something on a disc? There's video clips and sound bites and screen savers and all that kind of shit. Remember screen savers? When's the last time you thought about having a fucking Voivod screen saver? But there's some rehearsal stuff, some demo stuff. There's nice bios of every member here in the booklet. And then the other half actually has the album remastered. Sounds fucking great. Uh, and then they have a bunch of live stuff as well as demo stuff. Now, the Voivod demos are kind of rough. Um, I don't know. I'm not a diehard Voivod fan. That's the thing. And I think a lot of people who are kind of in an older generation than I am are a lot more into Voivod than I ever have been or ever will be. I think to mention Hatros is absolutely so many years ahead of its time but at an era like war and pain they were really just getting their footing uh for what they were gonna 
turn out in their in their personality wise over the years. So this is really amateurish, and a lot of times I think there's just kind of like some sort of butt rock bluesy guitar solo kind of stuff going on that kind of pulls me out of it. But overall, it is a classic early metal record that's pretty important for its time. It's just not the most appealing Voivod record um, in their discography by any means. But it's cool. It's got its own personality. Uh, so next, I picked this up. Uh, Vigrid's, let's see, The Ash Ains' Levens. I don't know. Um, this is just kind of one of those bands that I've always confused with some other bands. I didn't really, I just didn't really have a, a real good idea of what Vigrid is like in my head. I knew No Colors put this out back in, I don't know, 02 or 03 or something like that. I could be way off the mark, but talk about some forgettable fucking packaging on there. Way to go. I would I would almost rather have this fucking band photo on the front than anything. Uh, but it is a really remarkable record, and for its time, which I can't seem to find <laughs> right now, it is... Uh, one of the very first DSBM records, uh, and this album predates that term by at least 10 years, I'm sure. Uh, but it really falls in line with that sort of style. It reminded me at first of Abyssic Hate's Suicidal Emotions, which I also would say is one of the very first DSBM albums that ever came out. Um, it is slow, super melancholic, and these harmonies just kind of creep up from out of nowhere to harmonize along with the main guitar line. So it's really slow and mid-paced and pensive and atmospheric and really, really, really well written and played. Um, it's, yeah, so, I mean, if you're in a DSPM or do depressive suicidal black metal, it's important that you understand the roots of the genre and listen to records like this and Suicidal Emotions by Abyssic Hate. It's really, really... Uh, good stuff, and I, I kind of don't like where the genre really has gone. There's a couple albums here and there that I do enjoy, uh, but for the most part, I think you know the the first few years of that genre are really where all I really give a shit about. But next we've got uh, man, I picked this up, and the album artwork alone immediately just caught my eye. And then when I saw it was uh, Charnel Wins, I immediately decided to buy it. Uh, Charnel Wins is I'm not sure which is the side project, which is the main band, but uh, these guys, the members of this band are also in the band Verge, who I am pretty much nuts about. Um, there's a camp of Finnish black metal guys that are just really, really odd. They, they kind of play like non-traditional themes and styles and work in sort of some post-rock kind of stuff. And that isn't really prevalent in this record at all. I've only listened to it maybe once since I got it the other day. Uh, but it's really, really interesting. So, I mean, it's got a lot of the tenets of the Finnish black metal scene, like Baptism and Behexen and shit like that. Uh, only it's not, whoa, it's not a million miles an hour. It's not super intense or anything. It's just really, really grim black metal with, you know, the spikes and leather kind of stuff. Uh, artwork and layout by my man, Justin Stubbs. Man, I, I figure out a way to fucking mention him in all my videos, don't I? But I was actually really impressed with the uh, layout on this, and it was definitely a reason that I wound up buying it. I just really like that sort of blood-splattered, gross sort of salmon artwork with the really, really odd drawing, almost like a Middle Eastern kind of drawing. I'm not sure what this album is about. I also really think that's well done and tasteful. So yeah, that's Charnel Wins. Check that out. Let's see, we're at about 10 minutes here, so that's four albums. I'm glad you guys are liking the short format, um, but uh, every time it seems like, God, are we done already? That's it. We'll see you next time. Keep it metal.